Perhaps you have some real estate that you wanna make sure is transferred in your will to your beneficiaries. Let's talk about how to do it right. Now remember, I'm a North Carolina attorney, so I'm talking about North Carolina law. If you are in any other state, make sure you talk to an attorney licensed in your state about your particular situation. And of course, this is not legal advice. This is general knowledge. The most important thing to consider when talking about transferring property in your will is what are your goals? So you may be thinking, hmm, I don't think my beneficiaries really wanna keep up with this property. They don't wanna to have to deal with paying the taxes. They're never gonna live there, whatever it may be. So you're thinking, I just want them to have the money from the sale of the property. So that's one thing. The other thing would be that you actually want them to own the property. You have to consider which of those is your goal because the wording is very, very important here in a will. I'm looking at this from the perspective of a real estate practitioner. And in North Carolina, the standard offer to purchase says that the seller has to convey marketable and insurable title. And insurable title is determined by title companies. Only a title company can tell us what they will insure and will not. And title companies have a really hard time insuring when a will's language just says, executor sell my property and split up the proceeds between these beneficiaries. Title companies are looking to see, and what the North Carolina law supports is that the will needs to have a direction and a devise. So it's not good enough to only do one of those things. Um, so you have to direct your executor to sell the property and you have to devise the property to the executor for that effect. And that's because once you pass away, your beneficiaries you know, become the legal owners of the property essentially instantaneously. So if you haven't devised the property to the executor, the executor doesn't have any control or authority over the property to sell it, at least not alone, not without the joinder of the heirs. That would look like saying, um, I give to my executor my property at 123 Main Street and I direct my executor to sell the property and divide the proceeds of the sale between beneficiaries one, two, and three. If you don't have those components in there, you may not have given your executor enough authority to actually sell the property. And then you're gonna have to, uh, the executor at least, will have to get the beneficiaries and their spouses, if any, to join in the sale of that property. If you got one rogue beneficiary that doesn't want that to happen, then your intent and your will won't be carried out in real life. Another thing that is really important to consider is at the time that you're making the will, the age of your beneficiaries. Now, of course, when we're planning for the future, we're hoping that death comes very far in the future, but as we all know, no day is promised. So you have to consider that if this document would be needed, immediately after I signed it, how old are my beneficiaries? And that matters because there are really particular rules in North Carolina about how minors can own property. So one way to handle this is if you have a minor beneficiary is you could create a testamentary trust in your will. And you're thinking, oh, if I have a will, I don't have a trust. Well, that's true, but a will can create testamentary trust, meaning once you pass, then the trust is created out of that document to carry out the terms set forth in the will. And this is often used for parents who have minor children, but uncomplicated financial situation. So you could say, if at the time I pass away, um, if my children are under the age of 18, then I'm gonna create this trust for my minor children. Here's the trustee. This is what the trustee is allowed to do. This is when my child can own the property. So that could be at 18 if you desire, or it could be in stages. So some people may say, when my child's 35, they can have everything. Or we can do it at 20, 25, and 30. The possibilities are really endless as long as they're legal, uh, but the testamentary trust could set up a trustee to manage that property. And then you don't have the issue of um, guardianship in the courts, which is the next thing. If you don't have a testamentary trust uh, or a trust of any kind, uh, to hold the property for your minor child, then there will have to be, you know, if the, if the child needs to sell the property, there will have to be a guardian appointed through the courts to allow that property to be sold. And the courts are gonna very carefully consider whether that sale or encumbrance, maybe borrowing against the property, whatever is affecting the property, consider that whatever action is taking place is in the best interest of the minor child. So if you want to try to avoid that scenario happening or the expense of that scenario, because it does involve court and attorneys, et cetera, then you may wanna consider a testamentary trust for your minor children. Another thing you wanna think about is, are there any conditions on the property? So let's say you wanted to give a particular house to someone for the duration of their life, and then once they have passed away to someone else. Well, you can create a life estate 
within your will. You can say, I give my property to beneficiary one for the duration of their life, and then upon their passing, then 50-50 to beneficiaries two and three. And what that means is that, you know, the the first beneficiary has the right to do almost everything with the property during the term of their life, uh, but they don't have fee simple ownership. And then once they've passed away, the other two beneficiaries would have fee simple ownership of the property 50-50. That also means if the life tenant, beneficiary one, wants to try to sell the property, they can't do that without the joinder of beneficiaries two and three. So that is a condition that you could place upon property. Another thing is perhaps you wanna give property to someone only if they meet certain conditions. Um, seen movies about trust, this is probably what you're thinking of. Um, you know, like think of the Lifetime movies where you know, the trust only comes through if the, the bachelor gets married by the time he's 30. Uh, <laughs> so those things can happen in real life. So they're not as common as Hollywood would make it seem. Uh, but you can place conditions within your will that you know, I'll give this property to so-and-so so long as it is used for farm purposes, but if they stop using it for farm purposes, then it will go to the next person. And a lot of times, this is the biggest thing of all, is we'll talk to people that'll say, I wanna do this as simple as possible. My family knows what I want. Okay, great. Well, if we're taking the time to prepare your will, let's also make that legal. The will is what makes it a legal requirement to carry out your wishes. Just telling your family, unfortunately, doesn't make that a legal requirement. While we hope and and really believe that our family will carry out what we want, um, grief is a is a strange thing that makes people do strange things at times. Um, it's sometimes hard to think clearly, and people might not act exactly on your wishes, or they might have misunderstood your wishes because it was a conversation a long time ago, and they don't remember it clearly. So that is probably the most important thing of all: is that if it's not contained within one of these legal documents, then there's no legal requirement for it to happen. So if you want to convey property in your will, make sure you consider these things when you're talking to your attorney. Ask good questions to make sure you're doing it right.